Hong, uh, Professor Hankey talked about superior forms of cryptocurrencies that would one day dethrone Bitcoin and drive its price down. Do these currencies already exist? Are there alternative coins out there that you see fitting this definition? No, no, no. There is no superior form currently that is more superior than Bitcoin, that is more predictable, that is verifiable. Uh, actually, Dr. Han uh, Hankey was talking about the uh, potentially creating a currency board that is more superior than Bitcoin, uh, maybe pegging against gold. How, it, how verifiable is that? Bitcoin is a network that is P2P, that's sensitive, uh, 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 censorship resistant. Anyone, if you are, are interested in setting up a node and check it out, you can check it out. You can verify it. It's verifiable uh, to ev anyone, everyone in the world, right? How can that be done for gold? You have to have a third party uh, running the reserve, checking it, and have then invite other third parties like auditors and, and legal counsel to verify that. There are a lot of uh, potential points of failure in that process. But in Bitcoin, there is no single point of failure. That is what has been making it super uh, uh, exciting and different and unique and superior to all the other alternatives that we have in our traditional mindset. And again, I agree with Dr. Seferdin on the comment that when you're talking about the currency criteria, those are our currencies issued by government, issued by central banks. But that's a, an assumption. That's not a given. Like in our history of monetary usage for human beings, uh, not all the civilizations are using currency issued by central banks, issued by the government. Mm -hmm. Gold at, at, uh, for a long time is not issued by any government or bank. It was later taken by the government uh, as kind of the reserve and, and, and asked uh, the you know, people not to use it uh, okay. other than being a reserve, right? Well, not, so, not, but, not, not, not remember, <laughs> yeah, we, we had, we had yeah, private banking. The unit, the unit of account was... was uh, it was something that was in, indicated or uh, established by a government, but the the issue of private money was very common. So it, what you're saying is just not correct. There was there was a lot of private money and private issues. Those money. private monies are issued by third parties, by individuals, either an individual person or individual organization. In Bitcoin's case, no third party has been issuing it or controlling the supply or managing the, the management of it. It's, it's all run on a protocol, like Professor Saibedin was saying. It was run on the open source protocol. Everybody can see it. Everybody who are interested enough to learn about it can go actually and run the node. Anybody who are interested in doing it can actually build on top of it. Um, so, you know, it's very different. There is no single point of failure. We're taking mm -hmm. away... You and keep saying right. what happened. Process. What happened with the what happened with the the various scandals that have popped up, like Mt. Gox and so forth. What? How do you classify that? Wasn't that a wasn't that a failure? What, what was? You say that this is a fail safe system. Yeah, there Dr. Amos, I'll let you respond. I guess I I respond if I if I pick pocket if I pick your pocket and I take your wallet and I take five hundred dollars out of it that's not a failure of the U S Federal Reserve Central Bank the five hundred dollars are still working as intended so uh, when we talk about Bitcoin not being uh, not failing and not being attacked the protocol itself has not validated a single fraudulent transaction in twelve years of running now real transactions were done on the network where somebody managed to take somebody else's keys and effectively stole their money. That, that, is, a, that is a feature in all money. If you can own it, it can be taken away from you. And so, um, you know, the, the Bitcoin cannot remove a theft from human nature. That will always be the case. And as long as Bitcoin has ownership, it can be stolen. And uh, but, you know, the network itself continues to operate. So that's why I think, you know, it functions better. Uh, it's better understood as a base layer for financial settlement uh, layers and solutions that will be built on top of it. OK, uh, yeah, I have one. I that monetary. Yeah. I just want to emphasize again that monetary policy stability is really the key. Uh, and I, I would okay. I would ask. Well, yeah, Dr. I, 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 I disagree. I disagree with that because we, we have a stable, inelastic supply of Bitcoin. And that by definition means that as the demand fluctuates, 
the price will fluctuate and you'll have, it's an unstable system. It isn't a stable system, it's an unstable system because the supply, the, the supply curve is completely inelastic, ultimately. But and, ultimately, and as, a result of that, uh, as a result of that, the only process by which any adjustment can take place is, is the price. So the price, the price will be very volatible. I but one final thing about price I'm in the nomination of the U.S. dollar or any other fiat. Okay, I, I have uh, one final topic that I'd like to address. Uh, and, uh, I, just, please, I, I just really need to make one small uh, answer. Sure, to this. yeah, you go ahead. One book, last point, we'll have to move on. Yeah. Jastrom's book, The Golden Constant. Gold developed the most constant value over time and did that for centuries, as discussed in that book. But you look at gold's supply, it also didn't have a currency board. It also didn't have a monetary policy where somebody was uh, practicing you know, uh, uh, monetary supply in order to stabilize the price of gold. In fact, what gave gold that stability was the fact that it had the lowest, least elasticity of supply response to demand. Gold is the one good whose supply increases the least every year because it doesn't corrode. So gold uh, that has been produced over thousands of years is accumulating. And so marginal production is always very tiny. Because marginal new production is always tiny compared to the stockpiles, that's what gave gold its stability because its market is predominantly a monetary market and very little demand for industry and for uh, and very little impact of mining. So Bitcoin actually improves on that because it has a terminal growth rate of zero. So it should actually in time become better gold than gold in this regard. And I, I don't I, I think, you know, volatility is going to be with us for a while because Bitcoin is still very small and it's going to grow. But I think, you know, that before we get to the point where we can use Bitcoin to buy our coffee, we need, there is an enormous stage to, to cross first, which is people need to build cash balances in Bitcoin so that they can trade other goods with Bitcoin. But we're nowhere near that. The total amount of cash balances in Bitcoin are less than 1% of total cash balances in the world. But as it grows, I think we're going to see more of that. So I think, you know, from now until the point where you can buy your coffee with Bitcoin, there is an enormous, enormous opportunity of essentially a new asset monetizing that could eat up bonds and could eat up all kinds of other stores of value that people are using. So, you know, you, you, you'll get your uh, stability to buy coffee at a price of Bitcoin, maybe $1 million or $5 million. So, you know, you're, you're welcome to sit it out and wait out until then, or you can buy Bitcoins now speculating on the fact that this is going to happen. And if you are correct, you know, it, it includes, it, it, it will be massively rewarding in the long run. Okay, I have one final topic and I'll let you uh, go first, Dr. Amos, because that was a good segue. Uh, the concept of central bank backed digital currency. Now, this is being issued in some places already. The Federal Reserve in the US has not indicated they are doing this immediately. Do we need a digital, digital currency, a, 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 unit, a national unit of account backed by digital currency? What would be the motivations of implementing such a, such a, a, a concept? Dr. Ellis. I think, you know, central banks, um, the, their motivation is going to be to continue to do what are their uh, main priorities and tasks, which is managing monetary supply and controlling payment clearance. So if they do build their central bank digital currencies, they're going to be digital, but they're going to miss the most important characteristics that make Bitcoin important, which is that Bitcoin's monetary policy transparent is transparent and payment clearance is automated by uh, cryptography. So central banks cannot do this because it would defeat their entire purpose. They can't just replace their monetary policy with a strict uh, code that they uh, leave alone. That's not what they were meant to be made. So for my, in, in my mind, what central bank digital currencies are going to do are going to lead to more efficient, more effective surveillance by central banks and more effective inflation by central banks. And so they're going to make national currencies um, less useful as a store of value in the long run. And uh, I think ultimately they're going to serve as advertisements for Bitcoin's value proposition. I, I think that's the long run effect of it. When people realize the difference between what their central bank is giving them versus Bitcoin, uh, I think that's going to be an enormous advertisement for Bitcoin. Hong, what are your thoughts on CBDC and what do you think is the future of digital currencies as an asset class? Uh, on CBDC, my point of view is the same with Dr. Amos. I don't have anything additional to add. I think it's 
Uh, it's a combination the worst of the two worlds. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So you don't but think it's a good idea? Well, it can help. Uh, it can help adoption. It can help promote awareness of digital currency. Uh, but but uh, but it misses the most important point and actually uh, um, essential uh, strengthen the, the 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 bad part of um, yeah currency system. Okay, and Doctor uh, uh, Professor Hanke, I'll let you have the last word. Uh, should central banks adopt Bitcoin or any other form of cryptocurrencies as a national unit of account? Oh, no. no. The, the, uh, and the confusion that's been brought in here about currency boards, by the way, currency boards, let me say unambiguously, they have no monetary policy. They have an exchange rate policy. They exchange one asset for another asset at a fixed exchange rate that and and it's credible because the anchor asset that they hold covers the full valuation of any liability that they issue so they're they're completely credible but they they until are they not issue more until they're, they issue more liabilities no uh, they they can't issue more liabilities until they have 100% of the anchor currency as or asset as a reserve so so they have no monetary policy you're just confused about this you don't no, understand i, I, I think, don't understand um, I, apologize. I, think I, I think you're you're underestimating you know, what i'm trying to say here it's, it's the fact that they stick to redemption is a monetary policy so the fact that they continue to redeem it and they don't issue more no, liability no, no, the reserve no, they have no, that is a monetary policy no, you know, the, that's, the, the, that's the president not a monetary have done. policy. It's the an president can put a gun policy, but not a monetary policy. Yeah, but the president yeah. can put a gun to the head of the chief of the currency board, and they can make more money to finance a war or to finance some new hospital building or something like that. And so you're back at square one. With no, Bitcoin, no, that doesn't no, you, exist. You, no, you aren't. The only way they could do that is if they brought in the anchor currency and exchanged it for whatever was being issued as a liability by the currency board. They cannot engage in monetary policy you just do not understand the mechanism so there's there's, there's the not mechanism not can be broken and it can be replaced okay. and it can be changed i Bitcoin think dr Hanke, what you're saying, the conversation yeah i think dr hanky what you're saying is in a monetary board uh, uh there is no mon uh, sovereign monetary policy because you're looking for free of ca uh, free capital flow and also fixed exchange rate right so you have to give up sovereign monetary policy, i.e. the monetary policy for a uh, monetary board is actually the, the uh, monetary policy of the anchored assets. For example, if you're using gold anchor it, that's, that's the monetary policy of the gold that, that's actually being no, used. They, they, you, not, not, not really good at Hong Kong and, and figure out how the thing works. And, and you'll see that the quantity of Hong Kong dollars in circulation is strictly a matter of the demand for Hong Kong dollars. In, the, in that sense, it's just exactly like Bitcoin. Okay. It's the demand, the quantity of the issue of a currency from a currency board is strictly a function of only one thing, and that's the demand for that currency. That that's not what Bitcoin is like. We, 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 we that, have to, that uh, determines the quantity of the currency that's in circulation. There is no monetary policy. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.